everyone and welcome to Arirang News, live from Seoul, I'm Nahyun Gyeong. The stories we are following at this hour. South Korea's unification minister Ryu gil embarks on a trip to the U.S. to discuss policies and issues related to North Korea, including a possible lifting of sanctions on Pyongyang. The IOC president says why not let Japan hold some events for the 2018 Winter Olympics. Korea's host city of Pyeongchang reportedly says that will be unlikely. And it's no longer limited to songs and dance moves or acting. The Korean wave or Hallyu, propelled by entertainment giants, is becoming much more diverse. And we will get to just how much more diverse shortly. But first, the trip to the U.S. by South Korea's Unification Minister Ryu gil Now, he will stay there for a week and meet with senior American officials to discuss North Korea issues. The visit comes as Seoul seeks to find a new momentum to improve inter-Korean ties. Arirang's Hwang Sung-hee has more. In Washington, South Korean Unification Minister Ryu gil will meet with senior officials, including Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs Wendy Sherman and lawmakers vocal on North Korea issues such as Ed Royce and Marco Rubio. His trip marks the first visit to the U.S. by a South Korean Unification Minister since 2011 and comes as Seoul seeks out new momentum in inter-Korean relations. A senior South Korean official told reporters that the government must actively consider incentives for North Korea to resolve the issue of war separated families who are now in their 80s and 90s. Stressing its utmost importance, the official said it would be an international shame if the government failed to resolve the matter. Although he did not elaborate on what the incentives could be, it's widely speculated South Korea is considering the lifting of economic sanctions imposed on the North in 2010. The sanctions came after North Korea torpedoed a South Korean warship, killing 46 soldiers. The official stressed Pyongyang must apologize for the attack for the sanctions to be lifted, but added all issues will be open for discussion if the two Koreas meet for talk. Pundits say the South Korean government should seek a package deal that includes an apology from the North for the 2010 attack, the lifting of sanctions, and the issue of war separated families for a much needed breakthrough in inter Korean relations. Hwang Sang hee Arirang News. President Park Geun hye says North Korea's nuclear ambitions are a grave threat to peace on the Korean Peninsula and the world as well. Speaking at the annual World Policy Conference in Seoul this morning, she said the lack of trust and cooperation among countries in Northeast Asia especially was also jeopardizing stability. To turn the tide, President Park reintroduced her vision for creating a trust politic by which trust and cooperation would be developed through non-political exchanges between the two Koreas and countries in Northeast Asia and Eurasia. She also reiterated her drive for reunification, saying a unified Korea would bolster global governance for world peace. Well, North Korea says it was not behind the recent cyber attack on Sony Pictures and has pointed fingers elsewhere. While denying responsibility, the North Korea's National Defense Commission said the hack might be, quote, the righteous deed of the supporters and sympathizers of the North. It also suggested the hack may have come from South Korea, who it said linked the attack to North Korea without any evidence. Last week's cyber attack completely paralyzed Sony Pictures' computer systems and leaked a handful of previously unreleased films onto the Internet. The interview, although in a comical way, depicts the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and is due for release in the United States later this month. Now, the host city for the 2018 Winter Olympics, Korea's Pyeongchang, has been given the option of letting other Japanese cities hold some of the events. This suggestion was made by the IOC president. Pyeongchang has the final say, and the organizing committee says it's highly unlikely. Song Ji-sun reports. 
It took Pyeongchang three attempts to win the rights to host the Winter Olympics. But when the flame is lit and the games get underway in February 2018, some of the events could be taking place elsewhere. The International Olympic Committee has offered a Pyeongchang organizing committee the chance to host some of the events in other countries. The decision will be Pyeongchang's to make, though. The IOC's coordination commissioner Gunilla Lindberry told AP that Pyeongchang gets the final say on whether the games stay within the city or whether it takes the opportunity to host some events elsewhere. These proposals are part of the IOC President Thomas Bach's package of reforms dubbed Agenda 2020. The agenda is part of the IOC's bid to change the Olympic Games to better adapt in the changing world for financial and sustainability reasons. If we do not address these challenges here and now, we will be hit by them very soon. If we do not drive these changes ourselves, others will drive us to them. According to the IOC, hosting sledding events in pre-existing venues would save Pyeongchang 120 million U.S. dollars in construction costs and up to $5 million a year in maintenance. After voting on Agenda 2020 on Monday and Tuesday, the IOC will hand over a list of potential cities to the Pyeongchang Organizing Committee, which has until March to make its decision. The candidates include Nagano in Japan and Salt Lake City in the U.S., as well as 10 other sites in Europe, America and Asia. Pyeongchang organizers are said to be looking at all available options, but say long-term plans have been drawn up for the venues and construction has already begun. Song ji Sun, Arirang News. An American legislator says the proper name for Korea's easternmost islets is not the Liangkert Rocks or Takeshima, but Dokdo. Our Shin Se-min tells us more about the congressman and what he had to say about other issues surrounding the Korean peninsula. An 11-term U.S. lawmaker is making clear where he stands on a number of issues that have placed South Korea at odds with neighbors. In a wide-ranging interview with Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency, Congressman Ed Royce, who is chairman of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, said that understanding the past is key to understanding the present. On the issue of Tokdo Island, Royce openly rejected Japan's claim to the Korean territory and said its proper name is Tokdo, not the Lian Court Rocks as the U.S. officially refers to it, and not Takeshima, which is what Japan calls it. It's a rare assertion since the U.S. government takes no official position on the issue. Royce also slammed Tokyo for repeatedly declining to take responsibility for forcing women into sexual slavery before and during World War II. Calling it as horrifying as denying the Holocaust, Roy said Japan needed to admit history as it occurred to make for a better future. Regarding North Korea, Roy said he has introduced legislation that calls for stronger financial sanctions on the regime. The North Korea Sanctions Enforcement Act passed the House earlier this year and currently awaits approval by the Senate, although passage is unlikely in this current Congress. If the bill doesn't pass, Roy said he would reintroduce it once the new Congress comes in. In the meantime, the veteran lawmakers said Washington, Seoul and Tokyo needed to work more closely with one another to maintain pressure on North Korea over its human rights violations and repeated provocations. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. The entertainment agencies, mainly behind the K-pop and K-drama crazes, are not limiting themselves to only those two and are turning their eyes to other industries. Some of them include fashion and travel packages. Here's our Connie Kim with more. Big Bang, Girls' Generation, Super Junior. There are few K-pop stars who have taken the world by storm. Capped off, of course, by Psy and his YouTube hit, Gangnam Style. Behind every great act in Korea is an entertainment agency that cultivates and promotes them. And leading the pack is YG Entertainment, one of the powerhouses driving the so-called Hallyu, or Korean wave. Founded in 1996, it created a success formula with idol groups like Big Bang and 21 and went public on Korea's tech-heavy Kazakh stock market three years ago. 
YG now boasts annual revenue of some 104 million U.S. dollars, more than 250 employees and more than 20 artists under its belt. On the back of their success, entertainment giants are now branching out to other businesses. In September, YG launched apparel brand Nonigan, using its fashionable artists who influence fans all over the world to market it. Through pop-up stores in Italy, Hong Kong and China, it aims to rake in 90 million U.S. dollars by 2017. I've always thought that fashion and music go in line together. When we think of Big Bang and 21, we think of their songs, but behind their performances, it's their styling and fashion that makes them a whole. It even jumped on the popularity of Korean cosmetics with its own line, Moonshot, targeting K-pop fans with Asian facial features. Recognizing YG's growth potential, French luxury goods giant LVMH has announced that it'll invest up to $80 million in the company. While YG may be at the top right now when it comes to branching out, it's not the first. SM Entertainment, a Hallyu pioneer, started diversifying its business two years ago. It acquired travel agency BTNI, offering music fans special concert tours in Korea. And last year, SM collaborated with publisher Design House to release the lifestyle magazine The Celebrity, printing an average of 80,000 copies a month. As these SM and YG are entering these businesses, they could probably see some synergy when they utilize their artists in those areas. And as from customer standpoint, if they get much more touch points. Market watchers say it's important for them to keep their capital flowing, as it's too early to call these ventures a success. To promote their new businesses, it's also vital to keep the K-pop boom going. In addition to reaching out to other industries, it's important that they stick to their original source of profit, producing good music to expand their fan base worldwide. If YG and SM's new business ventures enjoy the same success that K-pop has, it'll not only provide a new source for profits, it'll also give a boost to a new kind of Korean wave. Connie Kim, Arirang News. In the year 2012, Korea was at its record high. All of the day's important events, events close to home and around the world. Join Na Hyung Young, live from Seoul. The whole shopping market thinks the true meaning of creation shines through. With household debt piling up to a record high, financial regulators are seeking ways to control it while at the same time promoting domestic consumption. Government policymakers have been urging the Bank of Korea to cut its key interest rate one more time following two rounds of cuts this year to help bolster domestic demand. But the central bank has expressed concern that such expansionary monetary policies risk making the debt problem spin out of control. Now, the easing of regulation over mortgage loans earlier this year has been widely blamed for the recent increase in household debt, which hit a new high of 950 billion U.S. dollars in September. They used to be focused on TVs and newspapers and then all over the Internet, and now they are migrating to the mobile sector. The amount spent on mobile advertisements is growing at a rapid pace in Korea. Kim Min has the story. The internet prompted advertisers to reallocate big chunks of their budgets from television to online media. Now, they have shifted their focus to the mobile phone advertising market. It's a market that has grown significantly here since the advent of the smartphone. And experts believe it's only a matter of time before the trend set by Korea will be followed by other nations. According to a new report by U.S. market research, eMarketer, the amount of money spent on mobile advertisements made up more than 38 percent of all online ads taken out by Korean businesses this year. That's up 18 percentage points from 2013, and well above the international mean of 26 percent for this year. But there's plenty of room for growth. The report predicts that mobile advertisements will surpass online advertisements by the end of next year, and will make up more than 73 percent of the total online market by 2018 when the international average will approach 60 percent. Expect a similar boom in the mobile payment transaction market. In the first quarter of 2013, the market stood at little over $1 billion in Korea. Just months later, 
by the end of the third quarter. The number has soared more than threefold to roughly $3.5 billion. With smartphones now in the pockets of so many people, expect advertisers and businesses to continue tapping into them with hopes of reaching as many potential customers as possible. Kim Hyun-bin, Adina News. Smart wearable devices may be taking off here in Korea. SK Telecom's T Outdoor service, which is tailored to wearable devices, has been has seen rather its number of subscribers surpass 25,000 since its launch in early November. The service, which is tailored for Samsung's Gear S smartwatch, allows users to make and receive phone calls without their smartphones. Another data plan by KT called Ole Wearable is also drawing strong interest. Within a month of going live, the service added more than 10,000 subscribers. LG U Plus says it's planning to launch its own wearable device plan soon as well. And moving on, negotiations for a regional free trade agreement for 12 countries known as TPP or Trans-Pacific Partnership have resumed in Washington. The six-day working level meeting started on Sunday local time and up for discussion are outstanding issues such as intellectual property and reform of state-owned firms to establish fair business competition in areas where developed and emerging economies have been at odds. The U.S.-led TPP involves countries including Australia, Japan, and Vietnam. South Korea, which is not represented at the talks, announced its interest in participating in November last year. Now, protests continue in several cities in the U.S. against a recent spate of police confrontations that ended with the deaths of unarmed black men. Demonstrations, which began peacefully, turned violent in some states, leading to the use of pepper spray and arrests. Son Jung-in reports. Thousands of demonstrators took to the streets of major U.S. cities over the weekend. The mostly peaceful marches were part of the ongoing protests held since the announcement last Wednesday of a grand jury's decision not to indict a white police officer in the chokehold death of an unarmed black man, Eric Garner. The decision closely followed recent cases of police avoiding prosecution after being implicated in the deaths of African-American men. In New York, protesters chanted slogans like, I can't breathe, the last word spoken by Garner, while others staged a symbolic die-in by lying down on the floor of Grand Central Terminal. While the majority of the gatherings passed by peacefully, some protests, including ones in Berkeley and Seattle, were marred with violence. Some protesters split off from the main crowd to smash windows and pelt police with rocks and bottles, leaving some officers with minor injuries. Demonstrations were also held in Philadelphia, Chicago, Miami, Las Vegas, and a number of other smaller cities. Protesters are demanding a fair execution of the law, regardless of race. Meanwhile, Eric Garner's family, who joined civil rights activist Al Sharpton at the site on Staten Island where Garner died in July, thanked protesters across the country. Sharpton also announced plans to organize more rallies in the near future and to press for change at the federal level. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Now, some 1,000 travelers are grounded in the Philippines due to Typhoon Hagopit. Reports say they are, or these are, people who had arrived in destinations like Boracay and Manila since last Wednesday. The storm is slowly making its way out of the country after forcing more than 1 million residents to take cover. The Philippines interior minister said at least three people died. The typhoon made landfall on Saturday, packing winds of up to 175 kilometers an hour, knocking down power and phone lines and flattening homes in an area near the region devastated by last year typhoon Haiyan that had killed thousands of people in its path. Meanwhile, Seoul's foreign ministry issued a travel warning to the Philippines. Korea's government said it was discussing a humanitarian aid package to send to the country.
it's always a treat to see a movie you grew up with or enjoyed years ago. A few very popular movies from the 90s and the early 2000s have been re-released. Our Im Yoon-hee joins us today with some of the details. Good afternoon, Good Yoon-hee. Afternoon. So I'm curious, which movies are we going to talk about today? Well, that one you'll have to wait to find out in my report. But with the digital age, many things are being what's called digitally remastered. And so that includes anything from movies to albums. So a couple of newly digitally remastered cinema favorites have been released. And to find out what movies these are, take a look. Set against the beautiful beaches of New Zealand, Ada is a mute piano player who has just been sold by her father to a new husband. She speaks through the piano and through sign language interpreted by her daughter. The Piano was a hugely successful film when it first debuted in 1993, and now over 20 years later, it's been remade into a digital version. This movie shows what women truly want, seen through a piano. The rainy scene on the beach with the piano has so much heartbreak and inspiration. Another movie recently re-released is The Lovers on the Bridge, a French film about two homeless people who fall in love in Paris. One is addicted to alcohol and the other is losing her sight. But despite the hurdles, the two still manage to find romance in the city of love. One of the most successful Japanese movies of all time, Howl's Moving Castle is an Academy Award nominated film that captivated the hearts of millions around the world and is now another digitally remade movie to hit theaters this holiday season. It's very interesting and stimulated the imagination once again. The characters were impressively reinterpreted. Tis the season for family and a time to enjoy the present as well as the past. These movies were beloved decades ago and are stirring up those same sentiments once again for families everywhere. So when you say they are digitally remasters, I, remastered, I'm thinking the audio levels and the quality of the mm -hmm. pictures are, are a little bit more upgraded? Exactly right. So I actually did a little bit of digging, some research. So when digitally remastered movies are made, so they actually go back and redo screen by screen each shot. And so they enhance both the visual quality as well as the audio quality as well. Mm -hmm. And so people are saying that really enhances the whole movie experience. So if you've seen these movies before, you will not be surprised by the plot. The plot the same, uh, but you will be able to see a whole different type of movie because you get to see a lot more. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot brighter, more vivid. Mm -hmm. Right. And where can people go and watch uh, these movies? So, I mean, I think the fans, if mm -hmm. you're the original fans of those movies, of course they wouldn't want to go. You're going to have it, but you got to watch in the theater again. So many of the theaters around the country are offering it, um, especially like Lotus Cinema and Megabox are a couple of the big branches that are offering these movies. Uh, but with these movies, um, there's also a few other movies that they're offering that are digitally remastered like Tess and Memento. So mm -hmm. if you are a fan of those movies, you can catch those as well. So good time to see some old movies. Okay. I'm personally a fan of Howl's Moving Castle, so oh, I'm going to ask isn't? you where I can watch that. Well, I'll let you know after, after, the, broadcast. after the broadcast. I'll okay. let you know. <laughs> Thank you very much, Uni, for today's report. It's always a pleasure. Good afternoon. The early morning snow has moved out from the peninsula and the whole nation can expect to have a clear blue skies throughout the day and it's pushing the temperatures to relatively mild levels. And I'm sure as many of you have noticed, it's turned much warmer today. Afternoon temperatures will finally rise above the freezing mark here in the capital, topping out at 3 this afternoon and other regions will also have a warmer day. So let's take a closer 
closer look. Uh, cities like Daegu and Gwangju should peak at 7 and 8 this afternoon, and Busan will top out at 9 under lots of sunshine. And as for the other regions, Jeju Island will be getting up to 10, while Daejeon and Dukdo see highs of 4 and 5, respectively. Now, we'll get a break from the severe cold snap for the next couple of days, but as we head into the end of the week, things will get very cold again, so please beware of that. That's all for me today, and let's send it back to Hyungyang in West Studio. Well, thank you, Jihyun, for that. That's our news for now. Thanks for staying with us. I'll join you again from Seoul at 4 p.m. Korea time.